Mm. So there's some several other films that came from that. <laughs> it's just like uh, actually a, a probably a movie we've all seen. I think mm. as children, Three Ninjas. Oh, Three Ninjas. Jimmy hasn't seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it. What? I yeah. saw the sequels too. Yeah, I've seen, par- yes. I've seen parts. You're missing I, out. I've, I've seen enough. I think what little I have, and was I think not you'd hate, it, you'd hate it now. Oh yeah, no, I definitely would. And I'm pretty it's sure. Um, then did you not like three white kids learning karate? That never. <laughs> that wasn't ever a thing. That like that was not a problem. Okay, that wasn't a problem. <laughs> it's just a the stupid problem. Kids was, movie. No, no, no. It was a stupid kids movie, and also uh, the stupid kids that would you know pretend to be three ninjas they would act like idiots i'm like the heck the heck you doing guys it's like yeah. we're the three ninjas yeah and i was like please knock it off you you acted so dumb uh, my friends and i used to pretend we were the three ninjas uh, on oh. the playground yeah we we loved it well I mean, obviously it was, it was no, it ninja like, just the way the way those specific kids played it out like they were just like so obnoxious about yeah. it yeah that was clearly inspiration for Ninja Attack. And also, also three friends that you've never met. And another, psych, maybe a social issue with Three Ninjas. Typically, when the kids are playing Three Ninjas, there's, a, there's three good guys. So anybody else up against them are the bad guys. So yes. if you're the new kid in the group, yeah, that means. Oh, I see why you hate it because you were always the new kid. Well, I was either the new kid or it was just like if, if there was three brothers, it was just yeah. the three like it's like you guys aren't gonna switch it up. You guys are gonna be the good guys and like and part of playing pretend is if you're the bad guy, you gotta play dead or else you're not having fun. And then like you know if whatever. it's your first night at fight, I, club, you have to fight. Death. I did not expect this wow. to be uh, what, what happened? We're oh, going into this repressed anger. Oh, We're having a real breakthrough here, Jimmy. I had to play death as a child because of three ninjas. Holy shit. Go on. How do you Which is why I like Power Rangers because there's five. We had a, folks. I think we just had a breakthrough with Young James over here. I did not expect this. Oh my god! <laughs> Jeez, you got anyway. Oh, wow. This is John Turtletop's first so, movie. Yeah. <laughs> what is your involvement on this? Um, the man who would direct uh, the National Treasure films. This is his first film. Huh. God damn it. Jimmy ruined my home. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I had an apostrophe. We, we, we had a real Sherman's March moment there for a bit. <laughs> That's a great movie, by the way. It is. <clears throat> Did you like Three Ninjas? As a kid, I don't know if it would hold up. It's not going to hold up. I watched it a dozen times as a kid, but I'm never going to be able to watch it now. And like you, I've seen the, uh, the sequels. I think they're <laughs> There was one with uh, Hulk Hogan. Uh, three ninjas go to Mega Mountain. Shit, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I just remember the name. I only saw that one once. It's not good. The second one was pretty much more of the same. I think the second one's called Kick High. High Kick, kick Strike Back. I forget that one. No, no. There's something about it. Like. Yeah, it's like the Three Ninjas Kick Back or something. Three Ninjas yeah, Kick I, Back. Right, three right. Ninjas Knuckle Up and Three it's Ninjas like High back. Noon at Mega Mountain. <laughs> That's there what it is. Yeah, they, they switched out one of the brothers, but Ernie Reyes, who was in the Teenage oh, yeah. Beatles films, was the oldest of the three brothers. That's why I liked it so much. Because he, in my mind, it was an extension of the Turtles. He's actually good. It was like, oh, this is what it does when they go off into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Okay. He has his two bro- brothers. Yeah. So. Um, Jim Varney was in one of them. Mm-hmm. I love Jim that was, that was the thing I saw Jim Varney and not the Ernest stuff. Huh. Oh yeah. really? Wow. Yeah. So here's a here's a movie that it's not a it's not a hidden gem because it's it's pretty much a masterpiece, and I'm sure a lot of people would agree. It's Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. Ooh. Oh yeah. That's a that's, See, a, that's, that's a good movie. That's it's probably, that it came out in August. Yeah. They probably thought they were dumping a western. Yeah. Western was essentially dead at this point. Yeah, he reinvented <laughs> it. Um basically it's almost like the people who love uh, Logan, this is basically the Western version of Logan. It's about yeah. the, he plays like an old gunslinger who, you know, we kind of romanticized it <clears throat> back in the fifties and forties when we, they were making a lot of westerns. But now this is a this is a um, a more contemporary version where you realize those gunslingers back then, 
yeah, they were they were murderers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're haunted by what they've done because they've killed women and children along with outlaws. Yeah. Uh, I think it's might be Clint's best movie. Ah, it's hard to say. Outlaw Josie Wales is up there, but I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, it's definitely a, a contemplation on his well, entire okay. work. I, I can break I can break that tie with Josie Wales. Hmm. Yeah. At least with the uh, uh no, not Pale Rider. Uh, Unforgiven. Uh, that was p- pretty much an original, like original script, right? It was. It was okay, but like Outlaw Josie Wales, the it's book the best, yeah. was written by a racist. Oh right. Oh okay. Yeah, so we can break that tie because one. I could still like it. <laughs> You're saying that that author of Josie Wales is Unforgiven. I can't like Ender's Game. Oh. Was written by a homophobe. But then again, the irony is he wrote he wrote a story about like an ex-confederate that like had a multi-racial family minus black the heart wants what the heart wants jimmy minus black jimmy so he's not such a bad guy after all is what you're saying i mean you know he 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 attended rallies so like it was he was a real he was a real good guy deep down he just came out in his writing the heart wants what the heart wants he was one good guy in a bad situation or maybe one bad guy of his own creation I mean, he did write, like, he legitimately did write a good story. It's just confusing that, like, why? Yeah. We were talking about who, who's the racist, David Webb Peoples? Or no? I think, uh, I forget his name. The original writer? Of Josie Wells. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? Uh, that, that was his, that was his uh, novel. No, that's looking at uh, his, uh, his pseudonym. I'm looking at the thing. Like, it, was, it was found out uh, he had to write it under his pseudonym because, like, he was an elected politician at one point. Or was or was running for office, so like he was running on a very racist platform. So like he had to make that book under a pseudonym. Gotcha. Over Corey, sir. I'm so sorry. Hey, come on, for... But yeah, Unforgiven's better. Unforgiven's better. I broke. That's the point. Was I'm breaking the tie? Okay. And then I, well, this kind of did this sweep the Oscars? I got. I know. I know that um, the Clint one and. Gene Hackman won. I think Clint won for directing. Hmm. I don't know if Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman it won four Oscars. Yeah. yeah. Speaking best of, picture, uh, best actor in a supporting role, Gene Hackman. Yeah. Eastwood for director and best film editing, Joel Cox. Nice. Speaking of uh, Untouchables, uh, there's a connection to that again with De Palma. Um, Kevin Costner, when he was making No Way Out with uh, Gene Hackman. Yeah, it's a great movie. Gene Hackman apparently was watching him perform in that movie and he said to Costner later, he's like, this made me remember why I love doing this. I remember that anecdote. I could, I could tell you yeah. what that was. And there's, he, a part, yeah. there's a part, there's a scene in uh, No Way Out where they blocked it to have it <laughs> happen at a desk. And then Costner said, you know, my character is kind of erratic right now. He'd be pacing. And the director like pushed back on it and he insisted that no, no, the scene's over here. We're gonna have. It. He's like, well, Gene's not prepared for this. He's like, Gene will do what Gene does. He's a genius. So then, in the part, he saw him in a parking lot as he was about to leave. Gene Hackman approached Kevin Costner, and he thought he was gonna go. You know, you ever talk to a director like that again? I swear to God. But he went. You know, when you were so passionate about how you wanted to move the scene, I've been doing a lot of paycheck movies. You reminded me why I love acting. Yeah, mm. and that led him to take a couple of roles that results in Unforgiven. Right. He's pretty much going to retire, but without that... Thank God. ...had him win his Oscar. So... Yeah. Yeah, and that's... Interesting. Maybe... I don't know if that's my favorite Gene Hackman, but it's up there. Yeah. How, how can you know then your favorite Gene Hackman is a genius and everything? Yeah, I know. That's a, that's a tough one. wonder if we'll uh, come across him in a couple films he's always in something that's high profile so i don't know that he well we did it it was our february episode we didn't do a picks of the month per actor back then what loose cannons yeah loose cannons (laughs) damn is that your favorite gene hackman no but what a thought one of of mine yeah (laughs) (laughs) so joe how do you feel about unforgiving yeah or oh, I heard it. I haven't seen it. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, you haven't I, seen it. Oh, I knew God. that was gonna happen. Yeah. 
So I guess we're gonna have to kidnap you, sit you down, and make you watch Unforgiven because yeah. this is unforgivable. Yeah. The second time. Yeah. Too. That's why I'm still in the spot, but I'm glad we went into Josie Wales. So we didn't. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, good thing uh, I, I took over. Yeah. I stopped it from happening. I just assumed you hadn't seen it. <laughs> it's a safe assumption, honestly. Yeah. Have you at least seen a bridge too far? I haven't. Actually. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, I it's, haven't a, either. it's a long movie. Oh, wow. But Gene Hackman's in it, and like, I get it confused with the longest guy. Yeah, Clint Eastwood's in it, too. Speaking of which, uh, yeah. Connery's like, in it. Two of actors in it. Yeah, Attenborough's in it. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, too, too many. Talk about 1992. Yeah. Too many. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you guys remember that? that really horrible lurid uh kim basinger movie i was talking about last month i forget the name of it you gotta be more specific i know <laughs> yeah. um, it's a one where she has blackouts when she's drunk i talked about it but anyway more specific. it has like a spiritual, <laughs> it has a spiritual it like half the people know. that came out this month called um whispers in the dark which might actually be worse yeah um, it's for some reason that you, you talk about split personality being like demonized back then for some reason, every time they showed a psychologist uh, who was talking to a patient, the patients are always like really quirky and crazy. Like nobody has normal problems. Well, so therapy and psychologists were looked down upon until like the 2000s. Right. So that's when the industry started. Yeah, because it was up. like there was that, uh, that, stigma. that the stigma of like going to a head doctor. Yeah. You must be fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. So Annabelle Skior plays this uh, psychologist who, um, the people that she's interested in start getting murdered and her mentor is played by Alan Alda and twist. He's the one killing them. When, when Alan Alda is the murderer at the end and he's frothing at the mouth, I almost want you to watch it just for that. I kind of want to see that. Yeah, I think he, he got a Razzie nomination because he's so bad because he's miscast. You can't take him. You can't be scared of Alan Alda. It's like if Dick Van Dyke were a serial killer. That happened in Colombo. Really? Go to Colombo where he's a murderer. He's actually pretty good. Hmm. Um, but yeah, this is tawdry trash. Hmm. I can't believe Alan Alda even signed on for this. Um, this actually, actually, this movie we probably could have talked about because I think it's kind of an underrated gem. Digstown. That was our second choice. Yeah, it's a uh, boxing buddy sports comedy between uh, James Woods and um, Lou Gossett Jr., who Tristan's worked with. Yeah, I think. Mostly, we I wanted to do John Lithgow, and we'd just done Lou Gossett last year, and we kind of had James Woods in there last year for that Michael J. Fox movie. So hard way, yeah, yeah. But um, this is directed by Michael Ritchie. It's a really good movie. They play uh, uh, James Woods plays a boxing promoter. Lou Gossett Jr. plays a boxer, and they they kind of fix matches. And the villain is played by uh, Bruce Dern. Interesting. Is this the parody they do in The Simpsons where Mo becomes Homer's boxing promoter? Could be. That's funny. I keep seeing these films. I'm like, ah, that's the reference from that. Simpsons. Right. Yeah. Uh, because I don't a really that. obscure reference because I don't think this movie is really that well known. There's definitely a reason Kane reference in Simpsons. I remember seeing some shot, and I'm like, that's a shot from an episode in season five. Yeah. Interesting. It's a it's a really fun movie, and I mean. I mean, it's right up Jeff's alley because he likes those bloody comments. Yeah. Uh, a lot of homework this month, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Back to school season. <laughs> probably one of, the, one of the prime examples of the stalker genre from the 90s, uh, single white female. Ooh. If anybody remembers that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Bridget Fonda and Ali Sheedy. Ali Sheedy's basically playing like an admirer of Bridget Fonda and then she starts to become like her doppelganger. She starts to look like her. She starts to dress like her. She colors her hair like her. And um, her boyfriend, Tristan should know this, who's played by? Stephen Weber. Yes. Yep. Um, from Wings. And uh, there's a weird, there's a weird scene where she seduces him and has sex with him. He's like, wait, you're not the person I want to have sex with. What? Okay, it's cool. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that seems like a Weber thing to do. <laughs> You'll do. Yeah, that'll work. It uh, sounds like a thriller version of Desperately Seeking Susan. Yeah. It's so, not good. It's not good? 
I don't like stalker movies. Okay. I don't like movies where people are perpetually getting gaslighted, but I'm sure other people like that. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a movie that I thought it held up until I rewatched it. Stay tuned. Oh, oh. yeah. It came up, Jeff. This was another uh, option because we wanted to talk about John Ritter, but... God. It's so I bad. I saw it two years ago and I was like, Corey's not going to want to watch this. Okay. It's horrible. I remember as a kid liking it because it would be because uh, basically the plot is they get this remote. Uh, John John Ritter's like a cash potato and this uh, it's possessed, so he gets uh, absorbed into the TV and thrown to different channels. So it's almost like they're doing little parodies and vignettes as they run along, but they're they're not very inspired. They're pretty witless. Mm. The ideas themselves are good because there's one where they go to a game show network show. There's but it's the same people. premise every time. It's just something tries to kill them. Yeah, I think if this were remade, it would be really good because, especially if it were remade even ten years ago, because with the advent of so many channels or now even streaming, Amazon was talking about doing a TV series based on this. Yeah, I think it would have been a good idea, and you could do a different genre every episode. It has know? one laugh that I remember. <laughs> Which is John Ritter gets pulled into Three's company. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they got Tripper all over again. They unfortunately did not get the uh, actresses. They had doppelgangers play them. Right. Uh, little sick white female there, too. Yeah, and even Don Knotts wasn't in there. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, well, Don Knotts wasn't really doing much at that point. Yeah. He's in Pleasantville a couple years later. Speaking of uh, John Lithgow and Dexter, uh, Dokes was the assistant demon who's trying to terrorize him. Oh, uh, you know who the main one is? Jeffrey Jones. Uh, uh, there's some uncomfortable moments because I think he talks to their children. Stuff does not he, age well. Sorry. Ritter's children help save the day. So, yeah. Um, Excellent. So one of one of two dueling Christopher Columbus movies came out this year. Uh, there was not the director. There was fourteen oh two, which is directed, oh. directed by Ridley Scott. But this is Christopher Columbus: The Discovery. And uh, boy, you couldn't have had a more miscast <laughs> ensemble. You have Tom Selleck as King Ferdinand. Now imagine that with the mustache. the mustache. Nope, no mustache. And you had Marlon Brando as Torquemada. It's, it's, I don't, I don't know who they just threw darts at a board, I guess, to find casting for this. But it, the movie's awful, and uh, they really, they really kind of whitewashed Columbus. Huh. Hmm. And, and the history has taught us that Columbus wasn't a great guy. Yeah. So maybe. And Amerigo Vespucci maybe should have gotten a little more credit. Yeah, I feel like you'd have a. I feel like you'd have a very difficult time making an accurate Columbus movie, though. Just about him being a genocidal maniac, given <laughs> well the, the uh, yeah. this movie's just kind of turgid and overproduced, and obviously the casting is awful. I feel like if you wanted to do a Columbus movie, you could do a hit job on him, but everyone would be like, "Why make a Columbus movie?" So you're kind of it's a lose lose situation at this point. Yeah. Well, it's just like we watched that Lance Armstrong movie and that was a hatchet job. Yeah. I don't know. Like any of these explorers, it's kind of pointless to do any of them now because they were all like just searching for new land and murder. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. They were all just looking for a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. And going um, real bad. <laughs> one of uh, one of Brandon Lee's first movies, uh, Rapid Fire, came out this month. Really fun movie. It's one of his first starring roles. Um, it's him and uh, Powers Booth actually not playing a villain this time. Oh, actually, Powers Booth. I don't know. He's actually playing a, a, the, his police escort after he witnesses a murder by the mob, so the mob's trying to kill him. And he gets to show off a lot of his uh, martial arts prowess in this. Whereas uh, in some of his the, the real early work, he was basically just he was doing action scenes, but he wasn't allowed to choreograph them. Hmm. So in this, he actually gets to show off that he is like 
almost the heir apparent to his father. That's a fun movie. Um, Light Sleeper came out this month. I don't know. Yeah, it's um, Paul Schrader. It's part of his. Uh, it's part of his um, his his unofficial trilogy that has to do with like insomnia. So it's this American Gigolo and uh, the Walker, and um, it's Willem Dafoe. And he plays like a drug dealer in New York, and uh, it's it's yeah. Why did we not watch this? I don't know. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. Um, it's him and Susan Sarandon. And no. actually, David Spade has a little cameo in there, too, as no. one of the clients. Another, another, uh, yeah, I know why we watch this because I want to go over a look at but Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, uh, that would be a hidden gem this month. Anybody wants to watch that? Um, and then before we get the poster boy, one more movie, uh, a sequel uh, Pet Cemetery 2. Mm-hmm. Which is really, directed by the same woman, but the tone is completely different, and it's awful. Hmm. It doesn't. Pet really cemetery mean... too heavy petting. Yeah. Oh. I don't think we even need to describe it. We just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. Let's go on a first. <laughs> Buddy. <clears throat> Oh, I like the way you edited this. Thank you. All right. It's a little Post tough. Boy. Okay. So <laughs> the poster is um, so there's a red background, looks like curtains, and then a striped parquet floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the very focus of the image is one half of a friendship necklace, like half of a heart. Mm-hmm. Um, which is blank right now, probably because of the edit. And the uh, other half is on fire. Like the other, the other half of the necklace is missing. It's just like the, the jagged half that would connect is uh, on fire. Well, Bobby has so, it. So, what's that? Bobby has it. Sorry. Bobby has it. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Heartburn. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, so what do you what do you want first? You want the synopsis? You want the title? You want? Yeah, yeah. Guess what this could be about? Okay. Or, you obviously don't know this. I'm guessing. I don't. This is iconic, but really, yeah. I bet it is, but um, but with... obviously, if you don't know it, yeah, make up a plot or try to guess what the plot is, and then maybe come up with a name. Okay. I'll give so... you what's in the image because you might get it from that. Yeah, from what's in the image, I'm gonna say. Well, I already said heartburn. That's not right. Um, oh, the original. The the beast friends. No, it's about <laughs> <laughs> it's about someone who's best friends or best friends with with Satan or something. Some some such mm-hmm. underworld character, mm-hmm. and it's you know a love triangle that one of them wants to get out of but they can't because there's some sort of ethereal contract that had been entered into so they're half they become a half demon and can't get out of it there was a there was a kernel of truth in there <laughs> see i'm i'm going off of you know the the flames are definitely leading me in 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 that direction but it could also just be You're that stepping the way. they left uh you know Someone was left brokenhearted very fast. Maybe it's a car movie. Maybe it's no, no. I'm getting getting colder. Um, sure. heat, heat of the moment. Um, yeah, it's based on it. It's the Asia biopic, yeah. right? So, or, or it's a crime thriller where somebody has an affair and the person she's having an affair with uh, dies in a fire. And so you have that all hanging up over the whole thing. And then eventually it comes to light in some sort of dramatic thing. I'm totally going way off base here. Here's Colonel's of Truth but, in there. Is yeah. there stuff? You got some stuff. Do you want to try one more title and then I'll give you a <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Um, it's a little tough without realizing what this actually is. Right. I mean, that's the point. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> it's over okay i don't know yeah be mine 
Is that the lady from Mortal Kombat? I have no idea who that is. Oh, Mortal Kombat. It's, it's just a face. Some some no, blonde no, character Kombat. actress. In presumably seductive clothing. I love facing her. Facing away. Um but yeah, okay, so it's one half of a locket. Um is she like half mermaid? Is that what the other half should be? No, it's not okay. I mean, she does brown. <laughs> so if she's half mermaid, then that would mean like I wouldn't put a guess. <laughs> one, one leg. Actually, one leg she doesn't drown. She's still before she's put in the river. <clears throat> okay. So she's pre-drowned. Yeah. Hmm. The post burning desire. This is really funny because you have no idea what this is. No, I, I really, I genuinely, and I'm going to hit myself. Right, here you go. Here's, here's a tagline. Okay, give me a tagline. In a town like this, no one is innocent. Okay. Uh, something about guilt. Guilty conscience. A lot of guilt in this. He's going to be so mad when he finds out what this I, is. I am. You next, have no idea. The next thing gives it away, because if you notice that this in the tagline is a little rusty, because I was trying to work on my making yeah in Photoshop. Yeah. Oh. At 3 a.m. Yeah. So. People are. Okay, so it's, it's very clearly a no winners it's a drama mm -hmm. um someone probably dies someone has an affair someone does all three um and they're all just trying to make it's it's just two good guys and one bad woman in a bad situation close enough okay put Here's me on the, the way actual word that's there in a town like Twin Peaks, no one is innocent. Gotcha. That's right. No, so it's Twin Peaks. It's Fire Twin Walk Peaks. with me. Fire Walk with me, which was a theatrical release. Huh. Yeah, so <laughs> prequel, prequel to the show. See, it's it's funny because in the credits you did not censor out David Bowie's name, but that still didn't give it away. Like that's no. how. As long yeah. as you censored out David do. Lynch, that's fine. I did. I did blur out Kyle McLaughlin as Special Agent Dale mm -hmm. Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just in case you didn't know what this yeah. is. Yeah. Twin Peaks Firewalk with me. I have never seen oh, yeah. any Twin Peaks anything. That's why I knew as soon no. as you didn't know what it was. Like this is iconic. She's. They're always going back to the little heart she shares with Bobby, her boyfriend. And oh, that's what he you has it. So yeah. he's okay. he's the first <clears throat> suspect in her murder. They find her dead body in the pilot episode, wrapped in plastic near the logging. Oh, wow. Well, and that's why you think maybe she drowned, but she's wrapped in plastic. So then they're like, she might have been killed somewhere else. And why was she killed? And then Dale Cooper interviews everyone in town over the course of the first season, and there's a big mystery. Everyone's sort of a suspect. It's so it's is incredible. Is this? Um, this isn't the show, though. This was the no, yeah, it was a prequel the to the show. Without going into what actually happened, so in case you actually want to see it someday, I, they I find do. out who actually murders her in the middle of the second season, and then they kind of try to do some other mysteries for the second half, and it got canceled. Uh, so okay. Then he went back for his next project to yeah. kind of do more of what he wanted to do and give people what they wanted and answer some unresolved issues with her death but it wasn't really necessary. And if you've never seen it like Corey, he never saw the first saw the season. revival series and I loved it. Which is also weird. He just, he's only seen this in the third season, which doesn't really have anything to do with her murder. It's like what happened to the people that survived. I almost don't care about her murder. And, you know, with Lynch, he's just weird and esoteric. And this is the beginning of him being esoteric about Twin Peaks. Not really the beginning, but like, really obtuse about it yeah. and so honestly if you haven't seen any of it these two pieces are kind of <laughs> didactic in that way um the actual show is fairly straightforward at first but then it gets into the supernatural in this and that's why it's fire walk with me because dale cooper thinks he has some sort of connection with her yeah. in the afterlife and so <laughs> He ends up having dreams where he's in this red curtain room with a parquet floor. And so that's why that's there uh, that's okay. iconic as well. And then there's always flames in the dreams too, or in his images that he has. And so 
that had nothing to do with their actual death, except that there were possibly supernatural <laughs> stuff going on. So. Huh. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. I think you'd like the show, Jeff. But... Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I would. I just. It goes, it goes it's on the it. list. Yeah. It's on the retirement plan. Yeah. It goes. It goes real quick. Yeah. Yeah. You've never seen any of it. Right? I've never yeah. seen any. You. You'd. You'd like it a lot, actually. Well, now I'm not so, going to like it. Just okay. to be. Just to be. You contrarian. Anyway, yeah. we have a second poster. Uh oh. One. As if you couldn't put me in enough of my misery. All right. This, one, this one's more fun. Okay. All right. So we're in a desert of some sort. And, you know, in the background, there's there's palm trees and lit by the silhouette um, from the moon. And in the very foreground is a small house of cards um, made up of yeah. diamonds and hearts. I'm not sure. Uh, if that's a significant thing. Um, and then you have five Elvis impersonators parasailing in. <laughs> um, so this is something to do in Vegas. Wow. Uh, is this Honeymoon <clears throat> in Vegas? No, it can't be Honeymoon. What, what was that? Say, it's, not, it's not Honeymoon in Vegas, is it? Oh, wow. it might be. He got it. Yeah, that was pretty good. What? He got, the first he got it. Well, there's a yeah, there's there's a moon, so, and then have you seen Honeymoon in Vegas? I've not. So, do you know who's one. in it? I'll give you extra points for that. I'll give you both. Tony Danza. Tony Danza. Tony. No, he was, oh, no, he was in the no. Sorry, he was in the the Broadway version that they did. Oh, really? Broadway version of this? They did a Broadway version. Okay. No, I wait. Know what this is. Yeah, yeah, they did a Broadway version of Honeymoon in Vegas. It okay. was like a very limited engagement, but Tony Danza was in it. Huh. Not limited enough. Either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess let me give you this. I made these slides, so try to guess who those three people are. <laughs> I blurred their faces out. Right. Very Billy Crystal, Vince Vaughn, and Bette Midler. <laughs> Vince Vaughn was a thing back then? No, not not, not Vaughn. Uh, Steven Seagal. Wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just so I can go through it, here's the, the guy that the guy that plays Little Carmine in The Sopranos. <laughs> a comedy about one bride, two grooms, and thirty-four flying Elvises. What? And here they are. Unless you want to guess one more time. Uh, is one of them Steve Gutenberg? You want to guess? No, 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 no. Sense. Yeah, guess a famous actor about ninety-two. Or actor. Steve Gutenberg, uh, Michelle <laughs> Pfeiffer. Um, you want a clue? I don't know those those hairlines are really mm-hmm. like I all I can think yeah. is my <laughs> one Give of them. Michael Keaton. One of my favorite actor. Oh. Oh. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Give me a clue. You'll know me well enough. Yeah. All right. I'll just put you out of your misery. I'm. I'm just fine. I already guessed the movie. So, James Caan and Nicolas Cage. Oh wow, Sarah Jessica Parker. I was going to say Jer- Sarah uh, Jessica Parker, but I couldn't yeah, remember her name. Said, but I didn't think it was really all that relevant yet. He won his Oscar <laughs> next year. Oh, that's the next year. Yeah. Oh, he's not relevant. He just went back to Vegas and got drunk. Yeah. Wow. I should have spoke my thoughts. Oh well. Anyway. Always speak your truth, James. Anyway, I've the never truth seen. Is a Pat, wait, hang on, Pat Morita. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you. I blurred that out just in case that helped. It didn't help. It just made it makes it more intriguing. I know. I want to see it. You're watching. Yeah, I should. So, uh, what's it about? All right. So, it's about uh, Nicolas Cage is a commitment phobic private investigator. But uh, is it because his mother dies, played by Anne Bancroft, and on her deathbed says, please don't get married. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then um, he's haunted by it, but eventually he realizes he's going to lose his girlfriend, Sarah Jessica Parker, if he doesn't get married. So they take a <clears throat> they take a ride to Vegas in order to get hitched real quick. But then he's kind of a gambling addict, so he's indebted to James Kahn's character, who says, look, um, 
I'll absolve the debt if you let me spend the weekend with your girlfriend. Because she looks like the spitting image of his ex-wife who died. Okay. So he tries to seduce her and get her to marry him, and it becomes a love triangle. Oh, fun. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jinx and Sue. Hmm. Huh. And if you like Nicolas Cage freakouts, this movie has a lot of them. <laughs> All right. It's kind of his bread and butter, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So I'm trying to figure out how they decided that when they brought this to Broadway, they're going to be like, you know who would be great? Tony Danza. I he's playing, playing the Nicolas Cage character? I don't, I don't know. James Conn part. I can see him playing the James Conn part. Yeah. Uh, I wonder who was the uh, Nick Cage part. Steve Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway. Yeah. Given that we had a run of uh, films that cover people that... Uh, unfortunately passed away the last few months <clears throat> we thought given that our poster boy timely enough came up around the time james Conn passed away we're actually going to skip over john lithgow oh surprise and go with what's your favorite james Conn film in order to honor his memory i guess i guess start uh the gambler the original they remade it with mark Wahlberg, uh james toback <clears throat> Uh, it's a character study with James Conn. He plays a professor who also mm. has a hard blue. It, it's it's even it's even more than like gambling problem. He just needs the adrenaline rub. He's an adrenaline junkie. So by the end, he's doing things just <clears throat> really just really dangerous activities just so he can get a high off of it. Mm-hmm. James Conn's fantastic in it. We want to oh we want to leave out Godfather because that's obvious. Yeah. yeah I, Anything that isn't the Godfather. Yeah, films, I've never seen the Godfather, so like. That's yeah, neither like, have I. On my list, which I need to get on. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. forgive Jeff, but Jimmy, you're not. You're a connoisseur of film. You're a connoisseur yeah, of like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm shocked. Yeah. It just seemed a little too long for me. It's and also it like kind of is. Also, I didn't get into gangster movies so much later in my life. Well, you've seen right. Goodfellas at least. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the oh, thank Wait, God. he was in Bottle Rocket? He sure was. He wow. Is the reason Wes Anderson, one of the reasons Wes Anderson got popular because right. uh, I forget who got Khan, but they convinced oh. him to be in it. Might have been, I remember, I'm listening to I gotta watch that. Uh, Polly Platt, who was uh, Peter Bogdanovich's wife, and she was an advocate for younger filmmakers like Wes Anderson. And so I think maybe her connections got James Conn in. I'm jumping to conclusions, but I gotta watch that. Yeah. Off for the part, they were like, this young up and coming guy is trying to make his film with two two brothers, Luke and Owen Wilson. Which is and weird because we could talk about how like this is amazing. <clears throat> we could talk about how James Conn has passed on so many huge movies. Yeah, actually, his career is littered with more stuff, more trivia about movies he passed on than actually took. Yeah. Wow. That became huge. Like he passed on Superman. He passed on Kramer versus Kramer. Who was he gonna be in Superman? Lex Luthor? Well, gonna be Superman. Oh what? What he, he close encounters? Oh yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. Richard has so many huge movies, it's not even funny. I can, I can Here, I'll, I'll even bring up the list. I did enjoy Dogville. Dogville, if it was you guys ever see Dogville? Yeah, uh Lars von Trier's. Yeah, it was a very depressing Lars von Trier movie, three hours oh. long. But I love the the art direction in that movie too, because the whole thing takes place in like it's a sleepy little western town, but the town is literally like they're inside a sound stage, and it's just a chalk outline of the town. All right, so and so they when they go to each other's houses, they like they go and it's very clearly like Amy's house or whatever, and they just or the courthouse, and that's just. How and they they're just sitting doing all of this in basically a black box format. Oh, so here here's a list of movies he passed on. Listen listen to his list: Mash, The French Connection, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Close Encounters, Kramer versus Kramer, Apocalypse Now, Blade Runner, Love Story, Superman. <laughs> 
<laughs> he could have been the biggest star in the world. Listen, the man did what he wanted to do, and that's why he all of it was leading up to him being an elf. But he did horrible. Which one was he going to be in uh, French Connection? Popeye or the other one? He's going to be Popeye with Dog. That would have been good. And he was going to be um, Murphy in One Flew Over the Cougar's Nose. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, well. He had a great career nonetheless. Uh, yeah, I mean, the stuff he ended up picking was... Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Elf, of course. No. Uh, <laughs> ooh. No, um, what's wrong with you? I'm going to go with The Way of the Gun. It was oh, great. a little film around the turn of the century. <clears throat> has one of the best Mexican standoffs in the end. Literally. Yeah, yeah he uh, literally in Mexico. Uh, <clears throat> he just he just chews scenery like he he the best. You know who uh, wrote directed that? Uh, I'm forgetting. Christopher McQuarrie. That's right. Yeah, that was his breakout. I knew it was someone's breakout. It, he had done. Uh, using suspects was the first thing he directed. Yeah. Uh, did he direct? Yeah, he directed it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now he's doing the Mission Impossible movies. And... Wow. Well, I'm going with the bridge too far because, like, I don't really like. I'm looking at the list. Oh and, wow! Like, he brought I don't remember much in anything else. So like, eh. that's why I was thinking. But when you brought it up, I'm like, oh, yeah. Really? And also, I brought right? it up earlier, so it's fitting. Yeah. But like, you know. If it weren't for the fact that it said uncredited for 1941, like I would have gone with that. But like, do you remember a minute? I haven't. I don't seen remember it. a minute. In like but years. I, love that movie. I don't know yeah. what it does. Hmm. He probably he must have some sort of cameo. So it says like random sailor or something. He's got kind of a cameo in Silent. Like, but no, we should rewatch. Well, I should rewatch it. Seen, you yeah, should I watch should it. it I know it's. Good. I remember it being good. I just uh, don't remember. Dad, Dad yeah. even likes it. Yeah, it, I think that's an underrated Spielberg. Mm-hmm. From what I'm hearing from, it's people. a great movie. Yeah. I don't yeah. care what anybody says. It's a lot of fun. Um, I was also thinking about Alien Nation. Alien Nation's not a bad film. I like the show better, but the concept is good. You didn't. You didn't like Alien Nation. The concept is better than the actual movie. The movie is basically, it's it's another uh, buddy cop film, but the only difference is that there there's aliens. It really doesn't. It's cosmetic. It doesn't. It makes no difference whether they're aliens or not, really. Yeah, uh, Mandy Patinkin plays the alien, and I thought he was pretty good. But James Conn is the one that has to sell the fact that aliens now live among us <laughs> in normal roles, and so I think he's the best part of that. He's movie. very deadpan. Yeah, he's he's very good, and the guy who plays Sykes in the uh, TV show, good, but he's not James Conn. Yeah. Well, the villain is uh, Terrence oh. Stamp. He is, yeah. Yeah. That might have been the first Terrence. Actually, it would have been the first of all three. I might have seen Princess Bride first, but th- that might have been my first James Conn film. Mm. So. Mm. I was yeah, saying, Cam- Cam- the show's Cam- better, honestly. Yeah. That's why I went with Way to Go. He took a few years off in the eighties. Yeah. Because he kept missing out on roles. Listen. Well, apparently he, his sister died and that had a huge impact on him. Oh. Mm. That's too bad. So he was almost considered a Hollywood burnout. Interesting. Well, I'm glad he had his resurgence in the 90s then. Yeah. Um, uh, so what do we have? I, I got the what? Gambler, Way of the Gun. Bridge Too Far. Too Far, and then... I was going to say Misery. Oh. But then I found out he was in a movie called Undercover Grandpa. What God the damn it. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 now I'm going to go with Misery. But yeah, I do want to watch Undercover yeah. Grandpa now. Yeah. He, don't make us publicly Honestly, friend you on the internet. I'm not a huge fan of Misery, but that might be one of his best performances. I think I can yeah. do it. Might be his best. <laughs> Don't mute him. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> hey now. Hey, look, it's Paul Servino. Oh, <laughs> uh, Paul. Uh, he was an undercover just grandpa. A, just a who's grandpa cast is dropping like flies. It's just a who's who of people that died this month. Jesus Christ. True. Oh my god, this movie looks ridiculous. I want to okay. Once we're done here, we're gonna watch on the let's wrap program. it up. We're gonna go watch Undercover Grandpa. Watch, watch party for Undercover. <laughs> oh my god! Um, we hope you liked Raisin Kane. We hope you agree with us that it's a nice guilty pleasure. Uh, next month we're gonna do something a little 
less of a guilty pleasure. I don't actually know how to describe this because I don't know anything about it's it. It's, it's, it's a, I guess, a caper. Uh, we, we're going to cover two films because Jimmy wanted to pick The Last of the Mohicans, but Corey felt that that was too popular of a film still. I mean, has a it, good following he's still. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I just, I, mean, I thought it was the best movie that comes out in September, but of course it is. Corey decided to uh, push Sneakers which I also feel is still kind of popular. So we're going to talk about both of those because those are the highlights. Yes. But there's your uh, caper for the month. Uh, Let's just hope that Robert Redford doesn't die in the next month. Oh, Jesus. We don't, oh, don't say that. No, no, no. Stop no, that. Good because Sidney Poitier died this year. So Why would you do that? We're fine. I'm well, putting well, it out of the universe. They only die one at a time. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fine. It's going to happen. Figures. Uh, we can't have that. Happen. Okay. God. Hey, it's um, my fault. Ain't Rice died. I brought yeah. it up. Yeah, we don't need to put that into public. Yeah, no, 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 guys. It's my fault. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we hope you have a nice month uh, watching Raising Kane. Uh, remember to rate, review, subscribe, tell all your friends. Slam that like Ooh. button. Only review if it's a five star. We don't like any of you nonsense out there. I see those lines in iTunes. A couple of those got twos. I don't. I don't like it. Hey. Hey. Intimidation. Golden <laughs> <laughs> yours. Thank you. Welcome back to the Intimidations hey. podcast. Hey. You guys. Okay. Wow.